really optimistic about the potential for AI to help scientists cure, prevent, and manage all diseases in this century. We signed a collaboration with Microsoft, Microsoft Research Labs, even three, four years ago, where we developed an approach called generative chemistry to try to speed up how fast we can bring new medicines into the clinic. Last week, we announced a partnership with Isomorphic Labs, which is a spin out of DeepMind from Google, to also see how can we, again, speed up our ability to drug new potential targets for new medicines. Drug discovery. How long do you think it's going to be before we're uh, able to sort of think in terms of, of, of that kind of autonomy? I think we're starting to do this right now. We'll be the first AI derived and discovered drug. Yeah, so we're already working on, on real drug uh, programs. Uh, and I would be expecting maybe in the next couple of years, the first AI sort of designed drugs uh, in the clinic. That's really Over the last few years, there has been a huge boom in artificial intelligence powered drug discovery. Prior to the introduction of AI into the pharmaceutical industry, it would take anywhere between 12 and 15 years from the initiation of a drug discovery program all the way to this drug reaching the market. There are claims that generative AI is rapidly shortening the preclinical stages of drug discovery. According to a report from Boston Consulting Group and Health Charity Welcome, AI drug discovery is cutting time and costs by 25 to 50%. This could mean that more diseases are managed, prevented, or even cured much faster than we ever thought was possible. However, as I will explain in this video, just as machine learning models can be used to help with drug discovery, they can also be used for much more nefarious purposes. For example, scientists from pharmaceutical company Collaboration Pharmaceuticals published a paper that outlined how their de novo molecule generator could be used to design biochemical weapons. This dual-use threat of AI and drug discovery, i.e. the potential for scientific research to be used to help people, contrasted with it being misused for warfare or terrorism, is a huge ethical issue facing early adopters of AI in the pharmaceutical industry. Before I dive into the potential harms of the technology associated with AI drug discovery, I'm going to talk about why so many pharmaceutical companies are investing in it and the ways that it can benefit society. It's not just that these companies are saving time and money, although that's certainly a huge upside to it, but these new technologies may also lead to more success successes when it comes to the creation of new drugs. Rather than companies creating a batch of molecules that they hope will meet certain criteria and then testing them, machine learning can help companies start with a wish list of mathematically encoded drug properties that designs can be produced from. The case study that I want to talk about first is of a man called Paul. I have to say that this isn't his real name because he was anonymized in the research trial that I'm going to talk about, and I'm also pretty sure that this was just a name given to him by the MIT article that I'm quoting from, as when I was reading the original study, I couldn't find mentions of any names, even ones that were fake. Paul was diagnosed with an aggressive form of blood cancer, and after six rounds of chemotherapy that didn't seem to do anything for his treatment, it seemed like he was all out of options. None of the usual drugs seemed to be helping him. So his doctors decided to set him up in a trial with Medical University of Vienna, which is where he was based, that utilized a technology created by Excientia. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly. It's X and science, so I feel like it's Excientia. Just to flag, Excientia no longer exists as a company, as it has been, I assume, bought by and absorbed with Recursion, which is another pharma biotech company. I'll just refer to it as Excientia for the sake of this section, but just know that if you Google them, they're now bought by Recursion, and they also do AI drug discovery programs. Anyway, Excientia was a UK headquartered AI-driven pharma tech company that claims to have developed the first ever functional precision oncology platform and focuses on patient-first AI. The new technology that was used in this study was one that paired individual patients with the drugs that they needed by focusing on biological differences in each person. The Medical University of Vienna paper profiled biopsy specimens to quantify drug effects in order to guide treatments in patients with advanced blood cancers. What this means in practice is that the researchers took a little bit of tissue from Paul and from the other patients that they researched on and divided that sample into over 100 pieces and exposed them to lots of different types of drugs. So rather than Paul as a human trying all of these different drugs, the researchers used artificial intelligence to try lots of different treatments at the same time. This search resulted in the drug that they thought would most help Paul. Unfortunately, his body was too weak to go with this option, so they decided to go with the second choice that the model suggested. 
This runner-up was a cancer drug that his doctors had not previously tried on him because previous clinical trials showed that it wasn't effective for the type of cancer that Paul had. Two years later, Paul was in complete remission. According to the findings in the paper by the Medical University of Vienna utilizing x technology, 54% of patients demonstrated a clinical benefit compared to their previous therapy. They concluded that the AI-guided precision medicine platform helps identify highly actionable clinical treatment for patients with blood cancer. So if AI drug development continues to work in this way, it's possible that patients will be cured from diseases by drugs they never would have thought to try. In addition to finding the right drugs for the right patients, AI can also help in speeding up the process for discovering new drugs. Priscilla Chan of the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative has claimed that AI is the key to demystifying disease and helping scientists cure, prevent, or manage all diseases by the end of this century. In February 2022, researchers at Boston Consulting Group examined the research pipeline of 20 AI-intensive pharmaceutical companies and found that they already had 158 drug candidates in discovery and preclinical development. This is compared with 333 at the world's 20 biggest pharmaceutical companies, despite the AI-intensive companies being relatively new. These claims have built an incredible hype around AI-powered drug discovery, with claims that it is radically shortening the stages before clinical trials. And this hype is somewhat for good reason. However, something important to note before jumping the gun, although that hasn't particularly stopped investors, is that these claims are coming from the companies themselves and haven't been independently verified or peer reviewed by people unassociated with these pharmaceutical companies. Although it would be nice to think that generative AI will cure all diseases, researchers and scientists are still needed to create and test the molecules that these models suggest. The results, which might show that the models are in fact wrong and these molecules don't work, which is completely possible given the frequency of hallucination in other forms of generative AI, like ChatGPT for example, must then be fed back into the model in order to improve them. More significantly, drugs still have to be tested in humans. This is a phase that generally takes a long time and AI can't currently speed this up but AI does help cut down on cost and time, meaning that less time is spent testing drug molecules in labs that don't work. Also, less money being spent on drug discovery could result in fewer companies engaging in the sunk cost fallacy. This is a phenomenon where companies or individuals are reluctant to abandon a strategy because they have heavily invested in it, whether that's in terms of time or money, even though abandoning it might actually be the best thing to do in that situation. This would hopefully mean that companies feel less pressured to stick to drugs that aren't performing well in tests because they haven't invested as much time and money into it. As an editorial article in Nature rightly said, a lot of drug discovery is still primarily based in luck. Even if there is a reduction in time and financial investment getting a drug through preclinical testing, most drug candidates will still likely fail at future stages. Even though it's an amazing feat to have something that speeds up drug discovery process, and I'm very pro-generative AI being used in the medical industry, I worry about people viewing AI as this magical cure for all diseases and discounting all the difficulties that might occur after the model has made molecule suggestions. If you sat through the introduction of this video, you're probably waiting to hear me talk about biochemical weaponry and what exactly that has to do with AI-powered drug discovery. Researchers from pharmaceutical company Collaboration Pharmaceuticals were invited by Spies Laboratory, the Swiss Institute for the Protection of the Population Against Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Threats and Dangers, to contribute a presentation at their conference on how AI technologies for drug discovery could potentially be misused. The researchers mentioned that before this conference, they didn't really think about the ways that their model could be misused by bad actors. As their work is primarily virtual, they felt the security concerns around toxic chemicals didn't really apply to them. They were so focused on using AI as a way to improve human health, which is obviously a very worthy endeavor, that they didn't think about the ways that it could be used to degrade it. The paper discusses how the authors used a commercial de novo molecule generator that the company had already designed called Megasyn. Megasyn is guided by a machine learning model that predicts molecule bioactivity to try and discover therapeutic inhibitors of targets for diseases. It normally rewards predicted target activity, i.e. the drug acting only on targeted cells, and penalizes toxicity, so the drugs won't harm the patient. 
but the researchers decided to see what would happen if megacin rewarded toxicity instead. The models were directed towards compounds such as VX, one of the most well-known nerve agents, which was also used to kill Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And the design molecules were scored with an organism-specific lethal dose model. In less than six hours, the model generated 40,000 molecules. These were either known chemical warfare agents or new molecules that were predicted to be even more toxic than existing agents, as they had higher lethal dose scores. Just to clarify, the generative artificial intelligence used here didn't actually synthesize these new models, and neither did the authors, but with hundreds of commercial companies offering chemical synthesis, it's not necessarily a huge leap to go from the suggested molecules to the molecules being in existence. What's even more concerning was that some of the new molecules that it suggested were quite different to existing toxins. This suggests that entirely new types of more toxic biochemical weapons could be created that circumvent current national and international watch lists for known chemicals that are used to make this type of weaponry. If a bad actor tried to get a commercial lab to synthesize something that looks like a chemical warfare agent, the lab probably isn't going to do it. But as long as it doesn't look like a chemical warfare weapon, a synthesizing company might just synthesize the model and send it right back because they don't realize what it's being used for. In an interview with The Verge, the lead author of the paper, Fabio Urbina, discussed how the barrier to entry for this type of misuse is worryingly low. He mentions that a lot of the resources that they used for this project were free, stating that you can go and download a toxicity dataset from anywhere on the internet. If you have somebody who knows how to code in Python and has some machine learning capabilities, they could probably build something like this. In a quote from the Financial Times, Philippa Lentzos, co-director of the Center for Science and Security Studies at King's College London, puts the barrier to entry slightly higher. She says that the level of technical knowledge needed, both at the chemistry level and the coding level, means that this kind of model is above amateur level, but it's definitely not beyond the capacity of state-sponsored groups or national militaries to use this kind of technology to build new biochemical weapons. I think that most people would agree that despite these worrying findings, we don't want to stop using AI when it comes to drug discovery. Being able to alleviate someone of their symptoms or even cure a disease is of incredible value to society. This is especially important as there can be a lack of investment or financial returns for drug discovery tackling rare diseases or diseases that specifically affect low to middle income countries. In the Collaboration Pharmaceuticals paper, the authors flagged their concern around reputational risk. They suggested that the hype around AI-designed drugs could flip to a concern about AI-designed toxins, leading to decreased investment and public shaming. In my opinion, if we were to highly restrict or even to ban the use of AI within drug discovery out of fear of chemical weaponry, it would primarily affect those suffering from the rarest diseases or those suffering from diseases which do not affect the wealthy Western world that would be having opportunities taken away from them. So I think that we need to find a way to try and mitigate these harms rather than get rid of AI and drug discovery altogether. The authors in the Collaboration Pharmaceuticals paper had a couple of methods and suggestions for the ways that we can mitigate the harms that come with AI drug discovery. The authors have pointed out both in their paper and in subsequent interviews that they didn't really consider the possibility of their technology being used in a harmful way. Because of this, they suggest that education into possible ethical harms is super important. One suggestion is that universities should increase ethical education of science students and to computing students so that they are aware of the potential misuse of AI before they even enter the workplace. In general, the AI ethics and the technology ethics community have called for greater ethics education across all disciplines, with many computer science degrees at top universities now including mandatory ethics classes. Similarly, the authors suggest that conferences such as the Society of Toxicology and American Chemical Society should foster a dialogue between experts in the pharmaceutical industries, particularly in AI-led drug discovery companies, academics, and policymakers for the implications of these tools. Many AI policymakers have also called for a code of ethics to be created. The authors of the paper have suggested taking inspiration from the Hague Ethical Guidelines, which are intended to serve as elements of ethical codes to promote a culture of responsible conduct in chemical sciences and to guard against the misuse of chemistry. The ethical guidelines were created by chemical practitioners from around the world and have been informed by the Chemical Weapons Convention. 
The author suggests that AI-focused drug discovery, pharmaceutical companies, and other companies in similar areas need to agree to a code of conduct to train employees, secure technology, and prevent access and potential misuse. If things still get through the cracks, the author suggests a reporting hotline to the relevant authorities in case the companies that sell these models become aware of anyone developing toxic molecules for biochemical weapons. They have suggested that those selling commercial products like Megasyn should implement restrictions or use a public-facing API instead of having all of the code available to anyone who buys it. This should help enhance security and also help those companies retain control over how the models are being used. I think, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this would agree, that drug discovery is an area in which the use of generative AI can really help benefit society. I also think that unlike a lot of other uses of AI, it has the potential to decrease inequalities rather than widen them by helping to find drugs in areas where research is often underfunded, namely rare diseases and diseases that primarily affect low and middle income countries. It's definitely an important area for scientists and researchers to continue working in but I also think it's absolutely crucial to understand the harms that can come from utilizing machine learning in this industry. The best time to think about the ethical implications of this kind of technology would have been within the design and development stage. This obviously didn't happen with people in the industry saying they never considered that their technologies could be used in such a way. So the second best time to start thinking about these ethical implications is now. And I think it's really important for members of the pharmaceutical industry to consider the ethical implications of the technology that they're using and that they're creating. If you liked this video and you would like to learn more about AI ethics, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you for watching.